Hey everybody, we're here at the Van Show talking to my friend, Michael Buckley. Say hi, Michael. Hi, Michael. <laughs> hey, I'll tell you that joke never gets old. <laughs> <laughs> now, Michael, we want to know about you, so can you please tell us where you're from? Well, I grew up in Akron, Ohio, but I live in Brooklyn, New York yeah. right now where all almost all the children's book authors live. It's pretty funny. I have a joke that if you threw a rock out my window, you would kill a very famous children's book author. <laughs> they are all out there. Uh, oh, there goes I there, Carl. It. Oh, uh, no, I guess not. <laughs> <Yeah. anymore. laughs> I, I love being out there. Um, it, there's so many people from every walk of life, so much diversity. Uh, the food, art, music, um, Brooklyn is such a great uh, neighborhood. I love it. Awesome. So do you have any pets, Michael? I do. I have a, uh, a West Highland White Terrier, Ooh. and her name is Friday. Friday? Uh, yeah. And um, she is a, a rascal. Oh, yeah? Um, even though she's a little girl, she likes to roll around in the street and in mud. The filthier she is, the happier she is. <laughs> yeah. Excellent. Do you ever roll around with her? Yes, I do. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> oh, Michael's muddy again. Must have been out with the dog. Give them both a bath. <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. Cool. Now, Michael, how long have you? Are you you are a writer? Is that correct? That's what they tell me. Yeah. And how long have you been writing? Well, I think I was always writing. Uh, even when I was a little kid, I had a notebook and I would write little stories in it. Um, but I didn't always write uh, children's books. I, w I was a television writer for a long time and, oh, yeah? and a stand-up comedian and, oh, cool. and a singer in a punk rock band. So I had to write the lyrics for the songs. Wow. And then, and like being a, an author for children, sort of something, I wouldn't say I fell into it, but it, was, it wasn't something I had really planned out. Huh. Awesome. And so you brought a book with you today. I did. It's called The Sisters Grimm. It's the 10th anniversary edition of the book. Wow, congratulations. Yeah, it's been uh, out for a little over 10 years. It's in 22 languages. Uh, oh. We've sold millions of copies. It's been on the New York Times bestseller list. And when the anniversary came up, I had the opportunity to do something most authors never get to do. I got to uh, rewrite the book. What? So I could go back and fix all the mistakes I made. Um, oh. So I did another edit on the story, and mm. we got new covers and a completely new design, and we're hoping to introduce uh, this book to a brand new uh, audience of uh, readers. Okay. In a world where fairy tales are real, mm. two girls discover that their ancestors are the Brothers Grimm, <gasps> and that those st stories the Brothers Grimm always wrote about Little Red Riding Hood and Cinderella. All those fairy tales are actually true stories. Ooh. At the fairy, at the, they weren't actually writers, they were detectives. Oh. And the Grimm family has always been fairy tale detectives and they solve crimes that uh, fairy tales commit. Wow. So the girls take on the business and uh, that's where the adventure begins. Never have I ever mm, sassed a teacher. I have. Oh, you naughty boy. I was a big troublemaker when I was a kid. I, um, I have this thing called ADD. Okay. It's Can attention you tell us a deficit bit about that? disorder. Okay. Which, uh, sometimes it makes it hard for me to focus and concentrate. And uh, I didn't know this until I was an adult. Hmm. But when I was a kid, I was full fledged ADD. And most teachers didn't really know what that was back then, they just thought I was being a problem. Oh. So I, uh, I could uh, space out and talk uh, and. Uh, and um, not pay attention and forget my homework over and over and over. And the teachers sometimes got very frustrated with me. And, and I was also funny, sort of a class clown. Yeah. So when you put those things together, you've got a real tornado of trouble. Yeah. So there were more than a few times where I was sent to the principal's office. Oh, well, to be fair, though, I'm sure that was frustrating for you. Well, I to... felt like the principal was lonely. And he needed to... <laughs> You're doing him a favor. Yeah, I was like, hey. <laughs> Hey, it's me. Yeah, remember me? <laughs> I just came to say hi. Hey. Teacher sent me down here because they thought you were feeling lonely. Yeah, and he would tell me about his <laughs> marriage and all kinds of stuff. It was great. <laughs> Very appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> I just thought all the books were kind of depressing, and I also sort of thought of it as homework. Yeah? Yeah, because a lot of the books, there they were just weren't fun. But I had this one librarian, and she, um, she noticed that I had never come into the library, and she grabbed me and dragged me inside the library, and she put a book in my hand, and she said, Mr. Buckley, you are going to read this book, and in two weeks you're going to tell me everything you can about it. And I looked down, and that book was called The Mouse and the Motorcycle. 
It's by Beverly Cleary. Yes, it's it is. Still one of my favorite books. It's so good. Because the best thing about this book is, it, and I was at like 11 at the time, it had everything an 11 year old boy wants. It was funny, it was a big adventure, and it was absolutely pointless. <laughs> I wasn't supposed to learn anything from no. it. And that's sort of what most children's books were back then, like some sort of moral lesson about how to be a good person. But The Mouse and the Motorcycle was just a rainy day book that I could sit around and giggle and have fun with. And then I realized, well, if this book exists, maybe there's more. Ah. And that's when I started going into the library every day. Yeah, you know, the book for me was uh, Sideways Stories from Wayside School. Yeah. That's the one that's that got me. That's an amazing one. Because I wasn't so into reading either. And then I found that book and I was like, oh my goodness. That's the one thing I always say when I meet kids who don't like to read or their parents who say they can't get the kids to read. I always say there is a book out there. You're just going to have to keep looking for it. Absolutely. It's waiting for you. All you have to do is find it. That's beautiful. Yeah.